I welcome to all on the course of refrigeration and air conditioning. I am Prabhupada Sanapati, lecturer in mechanical department. Today I am going to start the new chapter 4 that is refrigeration equipment. So in this chapter I will discuss about the major component you are using in the vapor compression refrigeration system. These major components are compressor, condenser and the evaporator. And this chapter contains the detail of refrigerant compressor that is principle working and the construction detail of reciprocating and the rotary compressor. Then centrifugal compressor only theory, then important terms you are using in the compressor, then last part hermetically and semi hermetically sealed compressor. This is the one subtopic. Then second subtopic is the condenser. In the condenser we will discuss the principle of working and construction detail of air cool and water cool conductor, then heat rejection ratio, cooling tower and the spray pump. And in the last subtopic is the evaporator. So in this subtopic we will discuss the principle and the construction detail of evaporator then types of evaporator, then bare tube coil evaporator, fin evaporator and cell and tube evaporator. So in this video I will discuss or I will start the compressor, refrigerant compressor. So already I told these are the contents I will discuss in this video. Let's start the introduction part. As the, the name indicate that is the refrigerant compressor, that means that you are compress the vapor refrigerant from the evaporator to the raise the pressure so that corresponding saturation temperature is higher than that of cooling medium. So generally in the refrigerant compressor, you are compressing the low pressure refrigerant from the evaporator to the high pressure high pressure to the condenser so it is the here the refrigerant continuously circulate through the refrigerating system since some work is done on it therefore compressor must be driven by some prime mover prime mover means motor so, if you see in the compressor, it takes the heat at low temperature from the evaporator and pumps its to high temperature to the condenser. They are often sometimes you are called as the refrigerant compressor as a heat pump. The heat pump also, the heat is transferred from low temperature reservoir to the high temperature reservoir with add of some work. Here also compressor also same thing you are doing. You are supplying some work so that heat will transfer low temperature from the evaporator to the high temperature to the condenser. Then you are coming to the classification of compressor. In the classification of compressor, different way you are classify the compressor. The first method that is the accordingly the compression. Accordingly compression your category is three type. One is reciprocating compressor, rotary compressor and the centrifugal compressor. Then accordingly number of stroke you are classified two ways. One is single acting compressor, another is the double acting compressor. In the single acting compressor, one side of the compressor is active and in the two stroke you are getting one delivery pressure. 
in the double acting compressor both side of the compressor is active that means that in the both side you are getting the delivery pressure and the each stroke you are getting the delivery pressure then accordingly number of stages you are classified two ways one is single stage compressor and in another is the multi stage compressor single stage uh, compressor means single cylinder you are using and multi stage means multi cylinder you are using in between the suction pressure and the delivery pressure then accordingly method of drive employed then we can tell this is one is direct drive another is the belt drive means here the power is transmitted on the prime mover to the compressor one is direct another in the belt also you can drive the compressor from between the prime mover and the compressor then accordingly location of prime mover uh, you are classify in two way if direct drive and motor and the compressor in the separate in the housing you are telling semi hermetically compressor if direct drive motor and the compressor in the same housing then you are telling hermetic compressor so these are the different method to classify the compressor let's start the important terms or technical terms you are using here the first is the suction pressure the suction pressure is the absolute pressure of the refrigerant at the inlet of the compressor that means that with this pressure that low pressure vapor refrigerant from the evaporator that will suck into the compressor then you are coming the second important terms the discharge pressure the discharge pressure is the absolute pressure of the refrigerant at the outlet of the compressor so discharge pressure sometimes you are telling the delivery pressure in the with this pressure the press with this pressure it is deliver to the condenser then you are coming to the compression ratio the compression ratio or the pressure ratio both is same so it is the ratio of absolute discharge pressure to the absolute suction pressure so the absolute discharge pressure is always greater than the absolute suction pressure therefore the value of this compression ratio is always more than 1 unit then if you write if you uh, define in the accordingly volume we can write the compression ratio is defined as the ratio of total volume of the cylinder to the total clearance volume so total volume of the cylinder you are writing v and the clearance volume you are writing the vc so we can write rp is equal to v by vc then you are coming to the suction volume in the suction volume the the volume of refrigerant sucked by the compressor during its suction stroke so mathematically you can write that is the vs then piston displacement volume or the stroke volume or the sweat volume so it is the volume of sweat by the piston when it moves from its top dead center to the bottom dead center of the position so you can write mathematically the piston displacement volume or the stroke volume vp is equal to pi by 4 d square l so you can write d is the diameter of the cylinder and l is the length of the piston stroke then you are coming to the clearance factor the clearance factor it is the ratio of clearance volume to the 
piston displacement volume. So, clearance volume you are taking the notation V c and displacement volume you are taking the notation V p. So, we can write the clearance volume the notation is the capital C. So, we can write C is equal to V c by V p. Then you are coming to the compressor capacity. In the compressor capacity it is the volume of actual amount of refrigerant passing through the compressor in a unit time. So, you can it is equal to the suction volume. So, volume means the unit will come meter Q and it is a per unit time that is why it is come that is it is unit is meter Q per second. Then you are coming to the the last part important terms that is the volumetric efficiency. The volumetric efficiency it is the ratio of compressor capacity or the suction volume to the displacement volume. Now, you see the volumetric efficiency it is represent that is the efficiency is equal to V c V s that is the suction volume to the displacement volume V p. Here you observe if you are in if in the cylinder there is no clearance volume in the cylinder there is no clearance volume then volumetric efficiency is 100 percentage is total volume is the displacement volume or piston displacement volume V p. But here he mandatory you have to provide the clearance volume to save the uh, valves. Then if you are providing the clearance volume then volumetric efficiency is decreases. As you are increasing the clearance volume volumetric efficiency is decreasing. So, Manu, uh, um, uh, generally you are giving 2 to 8 percentage of the clearance volume of the total cylinder. So, these are the important terms you are using in the reciprocating air compressor. Thank you.